Hey guys, hope everyone's doing well. I wanted to get this out and talk about it a little bit, show it off in, on front of the camera for my new subscribers, people that may have not seen it before, and just kind of talk to you about why and what makes this the most impressive gun that I've ever shown people. Everyone that sees this, they get this look. I've showed it from everybody to new shooters to gunsmiths. And I get the same reaction from all of, all of them. Eyes wide open, jaw drops. So can you guess what gun this is? <laughs> well, if you guessed my 24 karat gold-plated Desert Eagle, you'd be wrong. Wah, wah. And the answer to the question is, guys, hands down, without a doubt, my FDE Smith & Wesson M&P. <laughs> Now, this is not just because it's a Smith & Wesson M&P or it's in that cool FDE color. The reason this gun impresses so many people, and I'm going to show you why here in front of the camera, maybe you'll get a little idea of it, is because of the custom job that was done to this gun by one of America's most renowned gunsmiths. His name is David Bowie, Bowie Customs, Bowie Custom Tactical. This guy, let me tell you a couple of his accomplishments. This was the first guy that ever milled out a slide up here for a red dot. He was the one that did it by hand. Before all these companies did it, before it was CNC'd, before it, you know, all these places started mass producing guns with the cuts in the slide, David Bowie was the first guy to do it. He was doing it in his own shop and putting those guns out for people. He also customizes Glocks and all these other ones, but the Smith & Wesson M&P is his specialty. That's why I bought this gun and sent it to him. He can definitely work miracles on this gun uh, like no other. And sometimes there is a long wait to get things done from him, but I'm going to tell you guys, it is well worth the wait. Also, some years ago, one of David Bowie's custom guns was featured on the cover of Guns and Ammo magazine. Now, you guys know how much it takes to get on the cover of a gun magazine like that, it really takes something out of the ordinary, something that they think is going to sell their magazine and make them rip off the shelves. One of his custom guns, similar to this one, was featured on that magazine at one time. So there's several things that he did to this gun, and I'm going to break it down to you guys, but I'm going to show you the most impressive part. It's not the stippling and what you see on the surface, but it's internally is where this guy really did his magic on this gun. You'll be able to get an idea for it, and I'll explain to you also what he did. Now, let's start with externally, what was done to the gun, and then we're going to move into the part that really makes this gun stand out to everybody that touches it. Okay, so on the exterior, we have what he calls the tree bark stippling. I really like the stippling, and it actually does, it's not just for looks, it actually does help you to shoot much better. It does look neat, but... The look isn't what it what it was put on there for. It's done for how it aids in the grip, especially if you're sweating and you're shooting out in the hot sun. I've done it. It really works. Next, he mills this down a little bit, and he puts the tree bark stippling in there. And I shoot left-handed. And what you're supposed to do here is you're supposed to come up with your support hand, and you can press down on this. Like if you're fast shooting, there's actually a little ledge there. Not for sure if you can see it or not, but there's a little ledge right there. And you push down as you shoot, and you can get better control with fast shots. So he did that on both sides. So no matter what hand shooter you are, you could use that ledge. Uh, the Viridian X5L I put on there. We'll go over that in a little bit. And uh, things I like about it, things I had to do to it, and things I don't like about it. He also put his sights on this gun for me. As you can see on the front sight post, it has a neon yellow ring around the night sight in the center, which is very easy to pick up. And the rear sight is what he prefers, a blacked out blade with two night sight capsules up in the corners that you'd be able to see if it's nighttime and it's too dark to see the sights. Also on the rear sight, you have the ledge where you could rack this off of your belt, your boot, or whatever you'd need to if you was using one hand. As you can see, there's the Trijicon logo. And up here, give you a close up of this, there's a Trijicon logo there. So, so far we're doing pretty good, right? This gun's looking pretty sweet, <laughs> but that's not where the magic begins. I'm gonna show you the, where the magic begins right now. 
Here is the part that impresses everybody the most. This is the trigger of the M&P pistol. David Bowie completely redoes this trigger from the inside out. And when he gets through with it, it feels like a custom Nighthawk 1911 trigger, or as close as you can get with a polymer gun. He redoes everything on the inside, all the internals. He uses jeweler's tools and polishes all the metal parts that touch each other. Also changes some of the spring weights to where they're still reliable, but there's a little bit different spring weight in the striker and things like that. All still while maintaining a safe four pound pull, but it's the smoothness. You can have a heavier trigger pull, but if it's smooth, it'll feel like it's actually lighter. So let me show you guys uh, a little bit about this trigger uh, in action. So to start off with, there's very little take up like this. And then when you pull the trigger, he's got it to dead stop. So there's no over travel, almost no over travel. I'm sure there's a little bit, but I can't see it by eye. So basically on standard handguns, you would have much more pre-travel. Look at the top of the trigger, not the bottom when I do this. Then when the trigger breaks, look at how it stops. Most all standard handguns, combat handguns, have play before the trigger engages the wall, and then it rides back after the break. The cleaner, crisper, and tighter you can keep this trigger, the better your groups are going to be. Now let me show you this trigger in action a couple more times. This thing is just a complete joy to shoot, guys. Here is the light and laser combo I went with. This is a green laser. This is the Viridian X5L. It's getting to be a little bit of an older model now. Still very nice, still being sold on the market today. I really like the way this light works, uh, the size of it, how it's kind of compact. One of the downsides is, is with the compactness and only taking one battery, the batteries do not last very long at all. Let me see if I can get you a shot here. There's the light and laser. Battery's kind of low right now, but there's the light and laser. Or you can go just light, just laser. You can go strobe mode. Now, one of the coolest things about this Viridian X5L, and this was my first trial with this, is this has a little sensor in there, and there's a little magnet in the holster that you can buy from Viridian. And whatever you set your light to, as you unholster, the light and laser automatically come on, or whatever this is programmed to, the light just the laser or the strobe. As the gun clears the holster, the light or laser activates, and as you put it away, it turns off, and the bottom of the holster is open, so you always know that your light and laser is off. So it's an automatic light and laser. I always found that to be neat, and for the time when this came out, that was really high-end technology. The only other problem I had with this light and laser was the fact that these screws were coming loose, the little ones. Uh, I think it was just this one right here, this little screw. I had to Loctite this screw into the body of the light and laser. I have approximately 1,700 rounds through this. I started with a case of 1,000, and I went to the range over several different occasions with that 1,000, and then I added on 500 at other range sessions, and then I finalized with uh, 200, approximate 200 more rounds uh, the last times that I was putting this through its paces. So I've got approximately 1,700 rounds through this gun, and it is just, it's amazing. I can't wait to get this out there. I haven't been practicing with it as much as I should be, but I'm telling you guys I will get this out there more. But I've literally put this in the hands of competent gunsmiths that I know not hacks, but real live gunsmiths. And I said, hey, I got to show you something. And they're like, oh, you know, that stippling, that's cool, I guess. And I say, no, 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 pull the trigger. And when they go like this, that every one of them, every one of them look at me with their mouth open and just turn their eyes and go, what in the world? Like they, they feel like, it's just like they've seen an alien. Because I'm telling you, that's the closest thing to a custom 1911 trigger I've ever handled. If you don't believe me, Look up David Bowie, uh, Bowie Custom Tactical, and read some of the reviews. This guy is, like, renowned around the United States with this stuff. And, like I said, he got on the, on the cover of one of the most prominent gun magazines there is some years ago. He was the first guy to ever mill out the slides for the red dot sights. Yeah, that was David Bowie. He, he, he invented that. So, 
Let me know what you guys think. I love this gun. One of the easiest shooting guns, easiest to keep on target. The less movement you have in a trigger, the easier it is, the smoother the trigger pull, the more your shots are have a tendency to stay on target if the shooter does his part. That's why this is the most impressive handgun that I've ever owned, period. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, this is DOF, and I am out.